Good evening, Vice Mayor, Yours members of the council, town staff, members of the public. Thank you so much oh. for uh, being here. Always a pleasure to uh, see you. If uh, you would be so kind, uh, Russell, and uh, call the roll. Councilmember Jablonski? Here. Councilmember Fiskelly? Councilmember Fiskelly? Here. Councilmember Breikers? Here. Vice Mayor McKay? Here. Mayor Nelson? Here. We stand for the pledge, please. Okay, before we get started, got a couple of uh, presentations that are uh, really uh, no, none. special and uh, appreciative. And of course, uh, December, I'm going to let you introduce them, but before I do, Aster, who I talked to uh, earlier, everybody knows Aster Knight, the formal, uh, former council member, vice mayor here, and uh, dedicated, committed uh, public servant that uh, created the Astronaut Found Knight Foundation. We all know the wonderful things that, uh, that he's doing. And uh, without going into detail uh, those things, we all know about this ballpark and this passion for uh, uh, this ballpark that uh, I know that's so very, very important to him to bring to fruition. And uh, I don't know, a little birdie on my shoulder, Aster told me that you've got some exciting uh, news for us uh, this evening to ad uh, advance this, uh, this, uh, this item uh, sometime in the near future. I'm not going to give it up, Aster, but uh, I know that uh, we're excited to hear the news. So December, if uh, you'll come on up. Always a pleasure to see you, December. Thank you. I can reach the mic. There's nothing to say except I would like to introduce Aster Knight and Joe Huppert from the Aster Knight Parks Foundation. And Mary Gay Chaples, I beg your pardon, Mrs. Chaples, please, please, come and give us the good news. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Joe and Mary Gay with all the, the great I'm things that they, <laughs> that, they, uh, that they do. Uh, dear friends of the town of Southwest Ranch is always there to help out and contribute. So uh, welcome, and Astor, always a pleasure to see you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor. Council members, ladies and gentlemen, this is an exact moment for the Astor Knight Parks Foundation that is able to continue its mission of enhancing the efforts of the town to develop and improve our parks and recreational facilities. This has been made possible through the support of our very generous sponsors, the Foundation's Board, which includes Gay Chaples, Chris Brownlow, Mary Nix, Karen Parkinson, Joe Huppert, Winston Simmons, Rick Bell, Dr. Dealer Franklin, and myself and our indefatigable town lesson, December Laritana Haynes. Without her, a lot of stuff wouldn't be possible. And the support of the council and staff. It would not be possible also without the support of the community at large. It is therefore a great pleasure on behalf of the board of the Astonite Parks Foundation to present this check for $20,000 to the town of Southridge Ranches to help its in the construction of the ball fields of the country estates park. Can you pass this? Yes. What I'd <laughs> like to do is maybe go down and get uh, yes, get a picture good. and, and uh, Aster, we know uh, how passionate you are about this particular project and putting together a ball field <laughs> and uh, you know all the other things that you've done you've contributed and uh, can't thank you enough for uh, yeah. You know, what you do, your commitment and the hard work and dedication is part of the Astronaut Foundation and all the other uh, people that are involved in this uh, foundation doing great things in the town of Southwest Ranches, and we appreciate it very, very much. So if we can come down and get a picture, Bob, you, if you Mayor. don't mind, want, thank you. want December here because of course she's she is. A, part of it. She yeah. needs to come up. Yeah. That's why her name is on Including the 20th 
one area. Is that what you're doing? I know. That's, that's the cool kids. That's the cool kids end over here. I'm over there in the library with the nerds. Listen. I make too much noise. I would take the past the Hollywood commission to move here. And they moved here. I walked through the room and like, this is probably tough for people. Okay. There was some of your employees. Your reputation's perceived you there. Some of your employees. Yeah, at least once. Maybe. So, Keith, you going to have that done annually? Got it. <laughs> Take care of it. I got one. So, you're going to have that one. procedure done annually? Okay, another uh, presentation, and I'm uh, excited to uh, introduce this, uh, this young man. Tyler, and, and excuse me, uh, Tyler, if I mispronounce a last name, I'm going to do the best I can. Taparowski, did I do that? Did I say that correctly? Yes, Tyler, come on, uh, come on up. Tyler's getting ready to uh, start the uh, Eagle Project. And uh, as part of this uh, project, which has been started already, I know you had a cleanup already in the equestrian park, but um, uh, it also includes uh, some additional cleanup. I know that you're going to be placing a... Uh, a plaque and uh, this geocache. Did I pronounce that correct? Geocaches. Geocaching. Geocache. And I know that you're going to, and you can explain to us what uh, that is. And uh, sounds like a, a fun, uh, a fun game. And I know that you're going to put that in four of our parks and also here at uh, Town Hall. So uh, we're looking forward to that and appreciate you selecting the town of Southwest Ranches for your project. The floor's all yours. We'd uh, love to hear about it. Well, hello. My name is Tyler Tabrowski. I'm a proud resident of Southwest Ranches and a life scout for Troop 224. And I'm showing you guys my Eagle project for the town. So what my project is, is that it's gonna benefit the park's Southwest Ranches, and it's gonna be a cleanup at the park. We're gonna be putting a plaque on a rock in front of a flagpole at the equestrian park. And we're going to be adding geocaches to all the town parks and town hall. So what I've done so far is that I've gotten permission by the town and the Boy Scouts of America. I've also done some fundraising. I'm almost done, but I have a little bit left. I am completed phase one of my Eagle project, which is the cleanup of, at the equestrian park. I have purchased a plaque and a boulder for the cementing of the plaque on the boulder at the equestrian park. And that's it. So this is phase one. As you can see on the left is what the back wall of the equestrian park looked like before. And on the right is after. And as you can see, it, it's a big help. So phase two is going to be me putting a rock in front of a flagpole that Stephen Cuoco did for Easy Gold Project and putting a plaque on it. And the plaque is in remembrance of all the military soldiers that fought for our country. And phase three will be the placement of geocaches at all the town parks and town hall. And what geocaching is, is like a worldwide treasure hunt game. And what it does is it brings more people to the town's parks so they get to learn more about the town. Yeah. And for this, I'll need an additional $200 to complete this phase of the project. Is there any questions? No, how, uh, where will the, uh, like, are they hidden somewhere and people have to hunt for them? Is it like a hunt, like a treasure hunt kind of thing? Well, the way it is is that you go to geocaching.com uh -huh. and you find the coordinates, like a GPS coordinate of where this container is. And most of the time it's hidden in plain sight. Like, sometimes it's just an ammo box in the forest. Other times it'll be like a fake electrical thing, electrical plate on a wall. And when it's magnetized, so when you take it off, it's a little piece of paper for you to sign. Once you find it, you go back online and you say, hey, I found it. Okay. You show off. Okay. 
I always contribute to you guys that do this stuff, uh, $100. So if December will remind me, uh, I'll contribute $100 towards his project. Thank you. Tyler, if we could, maybe we can come down. Do you guys mind if we go down and get a uh, photograph? And, Mom, we want to invite you up. And uh, is that your brother, Tyler? Yes, sir. Maybe we can get him to come up, too. Hi, buddy. How are you? What's your name? Bryce. Very nice to meet you, Bryce. You'll be very proud of your brother, I'm sure. Watch out. He's setting the standard, too, with this uh, unique and neat uh, project. You better be thinking about yours. Okay, we're going to continue on to item number uh, five, public, uh, public comment. Mayor, we have uh, two public comment tonight, uh, Newell Hollingsworth followed by John Eastman. Thank you, Keith. Good evening, Newell Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. Uh, this is the last time I'm going to speak about trash and garbage because I found out from our town administrator that our contract that we have right now is a toothless wonder. And there's not very much that the town can do about non-pickup of garbage and trash. So I'd like to ask that the town attorney in the next contract put a few sharp teeth into it. And, uh, yep, and I was sort of surprised we didn't have it in this one, but it doesn't, so this is the last I'm going to speak of it. Whatever we get, we get, and that's the way it's going to be. Uh, I'd like to speak on the guardrails a little bit tonight. We need to put into effect a design of what is still needed on the openings that in the guardrail that it's there, there's not enough openings in there as it stands right now. And down at Bonaventure Bridge, it was my assumption, and what I was told before all of this started was that the opening would be on the west side, similar to the one that's on the east side, which means that the horses do not have to go out into Griffin Road to get across on the Bonaventure Bridge. So, um, there's some things that need to be looked at, and hopefully uh, the council will give some direction and whatever board wants to handle it will take care of it and put it together and bring it back to the council, and you guys can work on it from there. Uh, tonight I found out that uh, nothing had been accomplished, and Rod's going to take a look at it, our town engineer on the um, piece of the trail that is down by 207th Avenue that has collapsed into the C11 Canal. And it's not a new collapse. It's been there quite a long time. I just never had noticed it because there was a guardrail there already. And we found this out when South Florida Water Management was here, and it was mentioned that, you know, that piece of trail could not be used, and the horses have to cross 
over Griffin Road to the south side, go down and then come back across Griffin Road because of what had fallen away. And I've asked uh, Rod to take a look at it, and he said he would take a look at it and get in touch with South Florida Water Management and see if they will repair their embankment, which has fallen away, and I'd like for the council to be aware of it and keep their fingers in that pot also and keep it stirring. Um, other than that, you have a good evening. John, John Eastman, mm -hmm. followed by uh, Mary, Kay Mary Kay Chaples and Barry Nunzig. Good evening, Council. John Eastman, 188th Avenue. I'm going to hit on a couple things real fast. Uh, there's a proposal out there to increase the county sales tax a penny, and it's to pay for downtown transportation. Uh, the developers have greased the skids with the county commission, and they've gotten all these high-rises put in, and they box themselves in. So at 8 o'clock in the morning, everyone goes to work and to school, and it's gridlock. So their solution is to cut down lanes and put in mass transit. Well, guess who gets to pay for it? We do, as a donor community. Us, Weston, Parkland, the people who will never use the system are paying in perpetual a one-penny sales tax. So I would ask you as our commission, put a resolution together something to let the county commission know that it's not going to fly. We do not need any more sales tax. When I was a kid in Florida, there was no sales tax. It went up to a penny, then two penny, then up to four cents, and then five cents. Dade County is what, up to seven, eight percent now. And uh, by the way, Broward County already put in a additional, I think it was five or ten cent gasoline tax a decade or so ago that increased our gas taxes. And what did they do with the money? They spent it on boondoggles. We got no benefit from it. So uh, we're already paying that extra gas tax that no one else pays. They're getting plenty of money. Let these developers pay the impact fees that they should be paying and don't be coming to us forever paying for it because our property taxes are out of sight now and I won't be able to afford to retire here you know, in a number of years. So, and it's the rest of us too. So please do something about this sales tax. I've talked to Marty about it and uh, our commissioner is hopeless, you know, but Marty's leaving that position. So uh, I leave it up to you. See what you can do about it to at least voice our opposition to it. Uh, Country Estates Park, we've got a lot of uh, the Bashovia trees. They are everywhere in there. They're getting big. They grow really fast. We need to allocate some money to get some of those taken care of. Maybe have a uh, kill the Bashovia tree day and invite some folks out there. But they, they, the seeds drop and you got a tree and within three or four months it's this big they're all over the canal bank they're everywhere they need to be eradicated because every day that they stay in there it costs us exponentially more to get rid of them in bulk uh, next thing speeding on 188th Avenue continues and the amount of commercial traffic is just mind-boggling I don't know where it's coming from or where it's going to but you know, we need relief on 188th, and we need enforcement on 188th. Uh, tree ordinance. There was a uh, note in our last uh, monthly letter by code about cutting your trees and such. And I, this goes way back. About 10 years ago, they came up with this tree ordinance the county did. I think it's about 33 pages long. And you would swear that it was written by a tree guy because it has everything in there that forces you to use them. You know, you basically have to manicure things and there's specific ways and he mentioned specifically hat racking. Well, occasionally a tree does have to be hat racked because you can only trim it for so long and then you get these really long branches that snap off in a windstorm. So, I don't agree with that ordinance. We should tailor it to meet our needs, not the county's needs. You know, 25 years ago, some developer took out a whole stand of old growth oaks, and that's what caused that, that thing to get uh, put on us. But it really doesn't fit Southwest Ranches. We're all on acreage, and a lot of us like to take care of our own property, and it's really none of your business or anyone else's what trees we cut and how we cut them. Because when a hurricane comes, we put $10 million worth of stuff out on the side of the road to get rid of. So isn't it better you just allow us to take care of our own property without interfering with us? Uh, next thing, nursery sod dropping. Every day I go down Griffin and there's chunks of sod all over because people buy it, they put the pallet in the truck, they don't cover it, and the stuff peels off. Well, it goes right in the, in the drain pipes. So, you know, uh, 
perhaps we can uh, enact some sort of rule with our town nurseries that they have to cover those sod racks with something uh, as these people are leaving. Uh, the guardrail, exactly what Newell said, we need more openings in it. Uh, you're walling us off from our recreation. And then the last thing, volunteer fire department continues to be a costly boondoggle. They do nothing, zero, and when Mr. Nunzig asks for some information, they want to charge him 25 bucks. You know, and so it's our money, and you need to be uh, responsible with it. The volunteer fire department does zero. We're paying for professionals. You need to disband them. They need to go away. If they can support themselves, have at it. Thank you. After Gay is Barry Nunzig, followed by Funnels, followed by Jim Lasky, and final speaker Mike Hanley. Um, first, um, I have something that you all are going to have to consider, and I discussed it with our um, chief accountant, and um, he gave me a printout. It's a little wordy, so I'll tell you what happened. Um, Oh, they removed a house, and on this 10 acres in the back was a the house uh, and the building in the back were CO'd. And they removed the house totally, and they left the building in the back, and they stored some of the artifacts that came out of the house, and they put in the back. Well, when the uh, county came to appraise the property, the house is gone, but the building in the back is not. It doesn't have a bathroom in it. It's just, it used to be a church, believe it or not. And, and it was a private church. So the people were going to take it down, but they're using it to store their personal effects in it. Well, the property has been appraised as commercial. And on their tax roll, which she gave me, she called me and she said, I didn't know my property in Sunshine Ranch is on Sterling Road was 10 acres commercial storage property. And I said, what? Let me look at that. So when I did, I brought it in here, and it was explained to me that you don't have, you have residential, commercial, industrial warehouse, institutional, or vacant agricultural. Well, it's not vacant. It's a structure on the property. It's a concrete building. It's basically storing their personal effects. It's not being rented. It's not a commercial endeavor. But they're paying, and, it, and it's not a zoning on the property. And that's what I had to explain to her, that this is just they're identifying it because you're storing your personal effects. It's worse than a warehouse cost, where you rent a warehouse, and you put your stuff in it, and you pay $50 a month. They're being taxed triple or five times the, the cost of just the square footage of a residential building. So I was told that you all can't just address it, that you have to do... A letter to the county? No. No, you have to do a... What was it you said? Fire yeah, you have to do a fire study. Well, my answer to him was, so far, I don't think that they've put out any fires or saved anything. So I would rather the money go to paramedics so that when the house burns down, they can treat my burns and not worry about, because they don't save the house. Um, the other thing is I took a ride out there where the new two-story school is going, charter school. I took somebody else with me, and I hadn't been out there since this, structure's been up. I was shocked. I was really shocked. Unbelievable. It's, it's just unbelievable. Monstrosity. And worse than that is, I went to go through the gate in the back that I'm not supposed to use. And the person that I was with said, oh, a truck just went through. Hurry up. You can make it. And they have a sign that says, this gate drops quickly. It barely missed my hood. I mean, I didn't make it. I stopped. Um, the thing is that it won't be used by any students. It's only used for the residents in that little area. 
And so that means all the traffic for that huge school, that monstrous school, is going to come in off of Griffin Road. Yep. If you go there, and I don't believe, you have to really see it. It's a bottleneck there. And it's going to be a nightmare. There are going to be people killed, hurt. Um, I, I can't even imagine. And it's two lanes. Is there any way that we can get the county commission... I know I can get Martin to come out, but we need them to come out there. They're the ones that are saying, oh, you don't need it. Pfft. You know, forget it. But if they saw it, oh, they'll change their mind. I think they would change their mind. And Noel is correct on that. What's really dangerous where that's eaten away and fallen away is it's getting very close to the road. So my feeling is if it's fallen away that much, how much more is it going to fall away and Griffin Road is going to? go with it so they really need to to address that and the other thing is where they have the few cut-ins now they don't have uh, that roll on the guardrail it just and if you try to go through it you're gonna get cut so I don't know if they're waiting till they're all through they didn't when they did Sterling Road they went and they put them in as they went, but they were also on drives. This is kind of like service area uh, inlets. And they're supposed to put seven, there's only three. I think originally we were gonna have 10 or 12. So they really, we need to find out what they're doing on that. And of course you all know that, that that's being taken care of as far as the trail, which now is you have to have a mountain goat to get up to the top, and then once you're on top, he has to be a tightrope walker, walker to, to do it because it drops off the other way. So supposedly they're going to take care of that. So anyway, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gay. Hey, yeah, hang in there, uh, too. We might have some uh, uh, potentially good information or... No, positive information on a recent uh, court ruling that Keith was involved with about that gate out there. So uh, hang in there for a few minutes. Uh, good evening, Barry Nunzig, 163rd and Sterling. <clears throat> no complaints tonight, gentlemen, something different. Just want to make you aware that starting May 21st is Safe Boating Week. Okay, with Safe Boating Week, the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary will be at a lot of the boat ramps giving free vessel exams. It's important to know that the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary does not charge for the exams and will not give you a ticket. So if they come in and they inspect your boat and they find something deficient, they will just notify you as to what it is. On the other hand, if you go out on the water in your boat and say your flares are out of date and the United States Coast Guard checks you, you will receive a ticket for $90 for having bad flares. So if you see the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary at one of the ramps, take advantage of their vessel exams. <clears throat> pardon me, and make sure that all, everything on your boat's up to snuff. I am joining the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary. I'm working towards it right now, and my plan is to be able to bring vessel exams to this town at your house. Cool. So what I'm doing, once I can get through the program and I can become certified as a vessel examiner, I will get with Andy and, and talk to the council, and we'll make arrangements so people can notify me and I can contact them, and I can go to their house, no charge, make sure that everything on their vessel is proper so when they go out, they can have a nice, safe, enjoyable time and have no worries. That's good news. I got yeah. three of them. Yeah. Okay, so that's it for me for tonight. Mike, you're right after... Jim Lasky, 188th Avenue. This is the brochure on the equipment you all own that can track and measure speedings and times. It weighs 35 pounds. It doesn't require a telephone pole. You can set them up and run a simple little angle out, and you get a um, car coming at you, a car going away from you, and you get a pretty close time within plus or minus a mile an hour. 
we're going back and forth in these little meetings complaining about speeders. Then the cops say they come out there and there was no speeders. Or we don't get this we don't get the ticket surveys that Davy can probably print out or used to print out for us every month. So know how many tickets were given on 188th Avenue, which we seem to spend a lot of time talking about it. This would be the answer to a little more productivity by the police department, wouldn't you think? That's exactly what the unit's designed to do, is to survey areas where they need to do more speed enforcement. They only weigh 35 pounds. It's not a big deal to set them up. You could, it's right here, it's mounted on a light pole, not a telephone pole. You could put them on a tripod, for that matter. You could chain them to a fence on a tripod. There's a whole bunch of ways you could set up. It's just like setting up a game camera, only the game in this case is gonna probably prevent somebody from getting hit. I would like to see you guys utilize this equipment, and if you really wanted to get fancy, put one of those um, uh, license plate readers with it. So we take a picture of the fool, and then maybe we'll find out that he's coming there every day at a, between a certain time. If you didn't give him a ticket, at least you send him a notice from the town, right? And if it's a kid driving, Let's say if it was my son and he was driving a car and he was going double the speed limit on 188th Avenue, he'd be having a talking to because the guy's insurance is going to go up crazy when he starts getting some tickets, some real tickets out there, and they might not even be able to afford to have him driving anymore. Gets a couple more. Um, anyway, so, so much for this. The other thing is the guardrails. You need to have more openings. It's not for me. It's for the novice rider that has to go on a, on a very narrow shoulder on the opposite side of the road to get to another opening. And then Mary Gay was correct. The way they've got the treatments on those, on those entrances there, it, it looks like a place where you could really knock the hell out of a horse's leg. Most, most horses are trained with big giant bags on either side of them so they don't bump into trees. Because if you're riding in the woods, one way to get a broken kneecap is to have a horse bang you, and sometimes they'll even do it on purpose. So you make it very uncomfortable for them to do it when you train them. But they don't train horses like that down here. They only train them in the, in the woods like that. So it's a very dangerous looking entrance on and off those entrances. And as far as the water management's concerned, that area that the bank's falling away, they need to put some sheet pilings in there and build it the way they were probably permitted to build in the first place. Weren't they given a certain amount of width and distance from the road and easement, so to speak? They did it in Silver Lakes when some of that um, residential land got undermined after one of the hurricanes. I think uh, John said that they put some kind of a mesh over it. They spent a lot of money shoring up the banks over there in, in, in Silver Lake. So I don't see why they can't do it on the C-11 Canal if it's so important as they say it is. Run some sheet piling through there and build a bank back up. Simple. Thank you. Mike's the final speaker. Mike Hanley, 205 Avenue. <clears throat> Just an observation. It seems like when I'm going east on Griffin and I come to Dykes Road, and this light is red, I always get stopped at the overpass for I-75. And then again, you get stopped at Volunteer Road. But it also seems like if you are unfortunate enough to get stopped at 84th coming east, you also, and you do the speed limit, you get to stop at Dykes, then you get to stop at 75, and you get to stop at Volunteer. That's why I was late tonight. Seems like it happens every time I go down Griffin Road. Check into it. I don't think the lights are regulated or are supposed to be regulated that way, are they? I don't know. Okay, that concludes uh, public comment. Item number uh, six, board reports. Uh, Noel Hollingsworth, uh, comprehensive plan chair. Uh, this next Thursday, which is our comp plan meeting, we're having our last meeting, hopefully, on the commercial area out on 27. And the package is supposed to be delivered to us uh, this week so the board can review it. And if everything is the way we have set it up, we will be sending it to you and most likely next month. 
you'll be looking at it yourselves and voting on it. Hopefully, this will put this finally to bed and we'll have a nice package for you to take a look at with all the good bells and whistles in it. Hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we had our Parks Board meeting uh, the other night, and um, evidently there's been some issues with uh, the parties, et cetera, that have been out there at the Rolling Oaks Park. So as we had originally said, we made our rules, which were very loose and easy going, and we were going to address it. If anything happened, we would tighten them up and tighten them up. So um, we really spend most of the time with some of the residents out there and to find out what would make best for them. And now December is working it up. So at the next meeting, we asked them to return. And we sent them home to come up with some ideas. And the biggest issue was they said, can you move the parking lot? No, we can't. So what is the problem? Well, the problem is that when the cars are there at night and they go to back out or turn around, the lights evidently shine in their house. So we don't want to obstruct their view on, on normal time without the parking lot. So we told them to go home and come up with an idea that maybe we can put either a small hedge on the north end well, it would be the south end of the parking lot, with their north side. Put a hedge like you have. Yeah, the podocarpus. And no, the other one. Uh, oh, no. They, it, we don't want anything that's going to be a maintenance nightmare. Uh, <laughs> um, the uh, palms are a nightmare. I mean, if you want to keep them clean, you're going to be maintaining them 24 hours a day. So we told them we didn't want anything that was going to be a maintenance problem. So we made a recommendation of either a some sort of a uh, privacy fence just on the north side so just on the south side of the parking facility and we sent them home to think about it because they got a look at it how many properties is that I think it's two houses or maybe just one I'm not sure but um, they're gonna do that and then they're gonna give some feedback to December and then we're gonna have the meeting next month and we're gonna discuss everything but one thing we did pretty much unanimously tell her to go ahead and do and that's to hire someone to be there when these people are there if it's a four hour and they're going to pay for it it's going to be part of their cost because one of the problems that happened that you know it only takes one to break the camel's back was that they we're told all the rules. They had all the rules. And then they proceeded to do what they wanted to do. And then December had to go over there at night and try to deal with it. And they really didn't care. And keep our deposit because the whole thing was so cheap anyway. So that's what we're addressing now. And we are going to charge from now on for them to use the outside. Because what they did was rent the small room for a hundred with a two hundred dollar deposit have three hundred people there that partied in the front and the back where they weren't supposed to go and and it was a nightmare and it was a nightmare for the residents so we're gonna tighten it and then we'll bring it back to you and you all can handle it from there Great. thank you thanks Gary. that thing keeps it It. <laughs> it does have a life of its own. Bob Hartman, Chair of the Drainage Committee. We had a rather um, interesting meeting last week. Uh, we had a number of residents come down to visit from the property that is directly behind the new New Hope Church over there on um, on uh, Dykes Road. And you know, they came, uh, I guess John had gone out to talk to them because we we're aware there's a problem there. And I'd love to have gone with them to talk with these folks, but since we're on the same board, we couldn't really go talk to them together. But John spoke to them and they came to the last meeting and they came gunning for bear. I mean, they organized before the meeting, they met, uh, they came up with more or less their terms 
and uh, they didn't really want to back off of their terms. Um, they do have a real problem. Their property floods, they believe it's all coming from the new New Hope Church, but per Kevin Hart, the church maintains and retains its own water, and then, the, you know, it's, there are a number of problems that are affecting their property. Dykes apparently drains onto them as well. But what became very apparent to the drainage committee is that there probably isn't going to be a lot we can do as, as the town unless they come off of some of their demands. They, they're, it's kind of a all for one or one of those types of situations where unless they get it all, they don't want any of it. And what they really want is more than what Kevin can provide. There's complications between the, the Sikh temple there, um, the, uh, the New Hope Church, and all of their properties. Uh, Kevin needs a way to drain all the way to the back to the pond that's back there, but they don't want to give up easements. They don't want the driveways cut. They don't want, they, they only want the canals cut in such a way that probably makes it unfeasible for South Broward to, to do something. Now, this is their initial offer. <laughs> we want it our way or it's the highway. Um, after the end of the summer and they flood continuously, they may you know reduce their demands. There's definitely a solution there. Um, Kevin had a good solution, but it, it all costs money. Um, you know They don't like the fact that he's tying into the church. Uh, the church has got a retention pond there, and instead of running more pipe, tying to the retention pond where there's already outlets, and then go back from there. Well, they don't want anything to do with the church. So I think you'll continue to hear about it. This is kind of just a, a heads up. I'm sure they'll be here sooner or later once they get it figured out. But um, it seemed untenable based on their demands when we spoke with them, as I say, as they flood. But they've been flooding for 30, 40 years. I mean, this isn't something new. 30, 40 years, Gay? Yeah. So you know whether this was just they had the night free or whether they're really going to pursue this, can't tell yet. Kevin's going to try to work with them to come up with an amicable solution, but the way they were talking the other night, um, it, it won't work for anybody with their demands. However, I've got hope that, you know, again, when the rainy season starts, you know, they might cool off a little bit. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Any other board? Come on, real quick, Kay. I'm going to give you a real quick opportunity. You didn't, no. use up, you didn't use up your five minutes. The only thing I want to say is that, and you did kind of slide on it, you know, you touched on it, oh, was, well, you know, you kind of <laughs> slid on by it, was, number one, their roads are private. Number two, they have not given up any easements and do not want to give up easements. And if we damage their roads, they want us to fix them. So basically, you have a private road and they want us to get rid of their water, but they don't want to give up anything. And what we told them was that it's against the law for the council or for anybody to take tax dollars and spend it on private property. That was our final thing. So that's where we're at right now. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Okay, that concludes board reports. Item number seven, council member comments. Gary? Yeah, I'll go, I'll go first. Thank you, Mayor. Thank everybody for coming, as usual. Just, uh, I'll be brief, as I usually am. Um, got a few things to note. Uh, yeah, I'll talk a little louder. <laughs> uh, May 14th, which is this Saturday, we have the uh, scholarship uh, uh, food truck event at the uh, equestrian park from five to nine and I urge everybody to come out It's a lot of fun a lot of kids there uh, DJ's a lot of food trucks um, I, I, I think there's like a half a dozen to a dozen of them this year. Uh, we have uh, Chinese raffles and we have a lot of raffles out uh, baskets of uh, Some pretty good stuff that uh, everybody can bid on and it's it's just a lot of fun when you win something you know, and you, you, you spent 20 bucks, big deal, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So it's, and it all goes to a great cause. It goes to our kids. Uh, and uh, so I, I encourage everybody to come on out. Uh, on the 17th, which is this coming Tuesday, uh, one of my competitors, uh, Chili's, uh, has an, uh, the Ed Advisory Board is going to be there uh, passing out flyers, I believe. Usually they set up a booth. 
<laughs> at wherever they do this at. And uh, if you uh, go in and uh, ha have dinner and drinks, what have you, and uh, hand them the flyer, 10 percent of their proceeds that night are going to the Ed Advisory Board. So uh, another worthwhile cause, you know. I'm sorry. Scholarship. Yeah, the scholarship. I'm sorry. Yeah, the scholarship fund. So um, that's all coming up. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention uh, uh, briefly, uh, Andy, if you could uh, talk about the uh, Sterling Road striping project, uh, where we're on, where we're at on that uh, project. Um, I know it had to go back out to bid, so I know you can uh, you can comment on it a little bit. And then uh, I'll close up with uh, comments were made on the uh, surtax, which is. Um, being contemplated right now for Broward County with the uh, one percent uh, versus infrastructure versus uh, transportation, and I can tell you from um, this councilman's point of view, I am dead set against any new taxes, uh, anything like that. Uh, it's it's a never-ending song; it will never go away. It, it doesn't have a sunset on it. Uh, I'm totally against it. Uh, I just see it as a a, a, a waste, and so uh, whatever we have to do on our side with that. And, we, and there may be nothing at this point, but we need to see, you know, what we can do. And we'll, we'll talk about it as it progresses, you know, throughout there. But I can tell you I'm dead set against it. So just, just an FYI. And uh, I'll conclude with that, Mayor. And Thank you, Gary. Freddie? Yeah. Uh, I guess you all know I sit on MPO for the town. Uh, even though I sit on there, we don't have a vote. It goes by population and uh, actually... Uh, there's two other cities there's, that are even behind, ahead of us that don't have a vote. For, it's very seldom. But one thing about it, even though you don't have a vote, you have the opportunity to speak. So I can speak for uh, you know whatever we want. I I still got the right to sit there and tell them how we will and what we want and what we don't. And one of the biggest things now, I guess you know, is this one cent sale tax and how it's going to be spent. We really, I don't have think we've taken a position here tonight yet but I think it's something that we did we need to do is talk about it and so that when I do go back to this I can actually express our thoughts on how we feel and how we, so we get a get a word out there anyway mayor I'm going to join in on this with uh, Freddie just a little bit from what I understand and correct me if I'm wrong Freddie the county has a uh, percentage division related to that penny tax they want to do different than what the MPO does? Uh, I, the I, percentage I, that the MPO wants is a different ratio than what the county wants. Yeah. So they are butting heads, so to speak, yeah. on where they're at. Me personally, I think we're better off sitting on the sidelines till they iron that out. Well, I don't know that we should get involved in that at all, but I understand you're asking I, I for us to participate. Has, I don't think that has anything to do with whether it, you know, this has got to be voted on by the people. That's what, that's what the thing is now. It's not the sales tax. It's how you present it to the people, whether they're going to vote for it or not. Uh, that's um, what all the talk is right now. Right, right, right. I got you. But part of what I'm understanding is that the county wants to keep 60 percent or 70 percent and give up 30 what is it 40 percent and give up the difference and the mpo wants to keep a different amount and give up so the ratio i understand it's going to be on the ballot to vote on and all that but the two departments being the mpo and the county are at odds on how that's going to be divided is is what i'm mentioning well you you understand at the mpo county has two seats on the mpo too so, uh, but they don't control. They don't control MPO by no means. So uh, it's uh, the MPO still has a big say so in what's going to happen on this. So, uh, and we well, who, who supersedes there, the MPO or the county? County. The county supersedes yeah, the, county. the MPO. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it would be the county. Yeah. But still, what the what the thing is now, nothing's going anywhere. If people say no. Right. So right now. It's not so much how we're going to spend it. There's a little bit of talk about that. But now they're trying to figure out how we can present this to the public so that it'll pass. That's where, the, that's where all the talk is right now. I well, don't know. We're just a, a gnat in that puzzle. Like, we don't mean a whole lot. As you said, we don't have a vote, but you've done a stupendous job for us there. And we greatly appreciate all the work you've done. Me, personally, I don't think we should actually step in that mud puddle right now. I think we should kind of sit back on the sidelines. 
I don't agree. I think that, you know, we, we have a say-so, and I think it needs to be put out there. Even though we don't get to vote, I'll tell you this. I've been on MPO ever since it was formed, and I got a lot of support on MPO. So when I talk, hey, even though I don't have a vote, a lot of the people that support us are supporting our town. You know, and you're going to, you got to realize we're way down the line. We're a little town. We've been fighting this ever since we became a town, so it's nothing new, right. and we understand that. But we still, and the best part about this, even though we don't have votes and everything, we still can talk and we get to talk. So the people that are in there, most of them are friends of mine, and they listen to us, you know, and Pembroke Pines is on, is on there. They have a big say, so but still we get along fine. So what do, you, what do you think that you're looking for from us, your colleagues? What do you think you're looking for from us? Well, they, they're looking for us how we feel. Two things. They want to know, are we a supporter of the sale tax? That's the first thing. And then how do we want to present it to the people? So they're, they're looking for, in other words, right now, they're in a position that they want to get this thing passed. But they know it's not going to go anywhere if they can't come to the public and explain Bless the you. public so they can understand it where this money is going because that's the name of this game right now is trying to come up with a plan that's going to be acceptable for the people they'd like you to talk more into your mic freddie oh i'm sorry that's okay so but anyway that's what the thing is right now is to make sure that the people understand this thing so that when it does go for the voter the people that it'll pass hey, and, and uh i'm not sure if there really is uh clarity to uh to this, I know that we, uh, Annie and I, and uh, Russell and uh, Freddie, who does just an outstanding job representing our interests on MPO, and have a tremendous amount of respect from the people that sit on that board. If you remember, initially we were just trying to figure out what was going on and where they're going. It was a transportation tax that they were uh, the county was promoting, 70% going to them and 30% to the municipalities, and that was to redo their bus system, a downtown a cable car system. And then uh, it broke up into other things, and other municipalities got involved in the debate. And I think it ended up passing at that particular time. But at the most recent uh, meeting, it's now um, an infrastructure tax. And again, and again, they were contemplating the transportation infrastructure. Now it's infrastructure with 60 percent going to the municipalities and 40 percent to, uh, to the counties. And again, there's not a lot of clarity. Now they're contemplating, you know, I'm not sure what the county's going to do, that potentially it could be two cents, one cent for, transporta one cent for transportation, you know, their proposal, and uh, one cent for the municipalities, and divided amongst uh, infrastructure projects. So again, we're still waiting for clarity. I'm not sure what the, the status of those discussions are. I don't think they know what the status of those discussions are. It continues uh, to evolve, and it's a very fluid uh, conversation. And uh, we wanted to talk about it at this meeting, but because we're not 100% sure what to talk about yet, that was the only reason we'd have this discussion. I think it's uh, pretty much unanimous, uh, Gary, you all agree with you, that I don't think any of us is in uh, support of any uh, tax increases. But um, you know, one of the concerns that we had, that if in fact it is a referendum item, obviously it has to be, uh, be passed, but if it is a referendum item, we want to be in a position that if it does pass, that we're able to share in, uh, in those revenues because, you know, we talked about some of uh, our infrastructure uh, project and TISDOR and uh, the resurfacing projects and, uh, and drainage. But again, there's not 100 percent clarity with regards to what the status of, uh, you know, that uh, one cent uh, sales tax is. Uh, where it's going, you know, and uh, where all the efforts are going to be uh, promoted, whether it be uh, via the county with the transportation. And the MPO did pass the infrastructure with a 40-60 split, but we're just not sure where, uh, where it lies right now. So I promise you when we get clarity and they're asking, uh, you know, us for confirmation to, you know, uh, whether it be uh, an interlocal uh, agreement or a resolution and support or whatever, but as soon as we know something, and I know Freddie will be the first one to tell us, and we appreciate that very much. So I hope that helps. Uh, uh, what some of the people probably out there in the audience, I think most of them may, when we say MPO, who's MPO? They're a metropolitan planning organization. At one time, this was part of Broward County. 
then they split. They're not part of Briar County. They're not controlled by Briar County anymore. They have their own budget. They do their own thing. It's a complete different thing. They've moved out of Briar County completely. They're in another building now. They're way up there on Cypress Creek. And uh, But it's not, everybody thinks that NPO is Briar County. It's not Briar County. It's completely separate. Okay, thank you, Freddie. Steve? Thank you, Mayor. Um, is this on? This is, I think I'm, yes, I think everything is. Uh, Down a little bit. Yeah, I know. All right, I don't think our mics are really working tonight, but uh, um, at any rate, uh, there, you go. Let me, there we go, now we're, yeah, now we're, now we're cooking. Um, the, uh, on, on this tax issue, um, I think uh, you're absolutely right. There's, there's a, a lot of fuzziness, very little clarity on it. Um, what I do think is clear to me is that it's a bad idea and that um, uh, I, I don't see any way to support this. It, what this, this type of tax uh, has no accountability to it. You know, if you have, one of the great things about Florida is that the majority of the taxes for, uh, uh, that we pay are, are, are homeowner taxes based on our property taxes. And the good thing about that is there's accountability to it. There's accountability to the local, local um, entity that's taxing you. You can come into this room and you can tell us it's a bad idea. And um, we're right here and we listen to you. We, if this passes, this just is added on. It goes into uh, the big fund and you'll never hear about it again. Uh, as, as Gary said, there's no, there's no end to it, you know? It just goes on and on, and uh, it would be the same thing, yeah, as the Florida lottery that was come up with, that, you know, this is gonna raise all kinds of money for education, and, and it has raised a lot of money for education, but you know what? The money that we used to pay for education went to other stuff, so we're still not getting plenty, you know, the money that we need to spend on education still not being spent on it. It, it totally didn't do what it was supposed to do. Um, all you have to do, frankly, is watch how this has gone, as it's been shown here uh, tonight. You know, originally the majority of the money was going to go to the county, and then uh, a few pieces were going to go to the, the, the cities and towns, and the cities and towns knew, knew it wasn't a great idea, and so they didn't get excited about it. So what did they do? Well, we'll give you, the cities and towns, more money, and then uh, all of a sudden, you know, people start getting on board with it. It just makes no sense. Um, this, this, the, the bottom line to this is that it's going to come down to the voters. It's not anything we can do as a council. It's not anything the MPO can do. It's not anything the county can do other than they're just trying to come up with a sales pitch for it. But the bottom line is that when it comes before the voters, we just need to, you know, we need to make sure it doesn't pass because it's a, it is a boondoggle. It is just going to be more money that we're going to pay for things that uh, I believe we're never going to see any real benefit for. So um, uh, personally, uh, I would rather not pass, pass a resolution on it because, frankly, it's not going to have any impact on whether it goes to the voters or not. It's going to go to the voters, and the voters are going to decide. Um, but, uh, you know, we do a lot of things with the county, and I don't want to put something out there that, uh, you know, Great. will, uh, you know, create a roadblock to doing other things that are positive for our town. So I'm happy to let it slide at this point. But I'll be very clear that uh, you know when it comes to voting by the resident, by the, the voters of this county, um, I'll be very vocal to say that this is not a good idea. Um, so, Freddie, as far as the MPO, uh, you know, <laughs> I'll leave that to you how you want to word it for them. But uh, that's that's my input anyway on it. Um, the uh, just a couple of some responses to things that uh, different residents have brought up tonight. Um, I do think as far as traffic on 188. Um, I would like to, you know, uh, John brought up a good point that they used to uh, come to us at, uh, at the Country States HOA meeting on a regular basis with traffic, with uh, ticket counts. Detail. Yeah, exactly. How many tickets were provided? And uh, Andy, if you can kind of highlight to that to them and, and have them, if they can Back just off. send that to, uh, to Bob Hartman and, and myself, just so I'd like to know, make sure that it gets done. Um, and, but send it to all the HOA. Yeah, send it to all the HO. Well, I think that what, they're, what they horses. did was for the country estates area, they, they broke it out. I mean, if they can break it out for the mall, that would be great. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, uh, so I think that would be good. I also, um, I would like to see for uh, traffic enforcement. Um, I do think that they spend uh, time 
in, uh, on 188th, 185th, 186th, a fair amount of time there. But uh, I've never really uh, seen that broken out. And, and I think, uh, you know, if they're, if they're doing that work, which I do believe they are doing, um, it would be good to know what that is so that we can get that out to the residents so they know that that's being done. And, and if it's not being done, then we need to make sure that it gets Close. done. Yeah, so. Um, I support you on that, I agree. Great. With a breakdown yeah. by HOA division. Yeah, it would be great, it would be great. Um, uh, I think I have a new uh, capital project for us uh, next year. Uh -oh. it's, it's, a very, it's a very inexpensive one. Can we please fix that mic holder? <laughs> What's it going to take? What is it going to take? I mean, we've been talking about that for years. Can we like put that on the uh, capital project list or something and charge the 15 bucks we need to do hey, to uh, get that to, to add to you about that? We also wanted lights here so we knew when our mics when are our on. Lights are on. Yeah, that would be good too. Yeah, yeah so uh, our lights on our mics would be good. Our lights on our mics. Um, and uh, Gay, I'd like to get that information that you got on that commercial designation. I don't, to be honest with you, I don't completely understand it. Doug, I know you, you, you brought a, a, a similar one. And I, I want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. I know you're but familiar fix, with it. And I, I don't know what the fix is, though. I mean, I think Keith has got uh, an answer for us moving forward on this. I'm not can, sure. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that, Keith? I, I mean, when it gets to your time. Don't take up my time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. <clears throat> I will. I'll okay, okay. I was just teasing, Keith. Um, uh, so that's that um, and then the last thing I wanted to touch on was uh, uh, some of you may have been aware and based out really for the council I wanted to bring you up to date that um, uh, we had a meeting at uh, Debbie Green's house and Debbie thank you again for opening your home to the community to doing that um, there was uh, Debbie and a couple other residents that uh, wanted to have a conversation about the speed bumps on 199th and um, and whether they were still necessary or not so we had a great meeting there just last night and uh, had a good good number of residents. I had a, a good number of residents call me ahead of time and express their thoughts, um, saying that they weren't going to be at the meeting. And then uh, had a, we had a good number. I don't know, 15, 20 people there at, at Debbie's house last night. Um, there, um, expressing both sides of the, uh, the argument. But I think I'm safe in saying that the general consensus was that uh, um, they preferred to have the speed bumps remain where they are. So that was how the vote came out before. So just to report back to you all that I think we're, I think we're, we're set in that particular situation. Great. Thank you. Yeah, a uh, couple of things. I want to give everybody a heads up kind of because sometimes they forget. The only time we're allowed to talk or discuss town business is up here under this condition in an open forum. So that's the only time we get to participate. Other than that, we can't speak to each other about any town, anything. You guys can call us and talk to us, but you can't tell us who else you talk to because then you become a conduit. So anyhow, just as a heads up and a reminder, you're free to call each and every one of us. Can't tell them what, who else you talked to or what you said. And then here at this platform like this, we can talk about anything openly at this moment, at this time. Other than that, we can't do it and can't discuss it or we'll all go to jail. Um, so uh, a heads up, Saturday night is a food drug event. It's for our students, our scholarship fund. Please come out, have a good time, enjoy yourself. Uh, it's a lot of fun, always is, and uh, look forward to it. And thank you all for coming out. Thanks, Doug. Hopefully, uh, John, that helped you with uh, the one cent uh, sales tax and the position of uh, of. Uh, this uh, this council uh, moving uh, forward um gay hang in there we got some uh news on your concerns about uh, 207th and your experience out there with that uh, with that gate uh, potentially anyway a court hearing that just uh, that just happened and uh, the potential uh, uh status of uh, those gates out there which is uh, i think uh, going to be good news and uh, for us, not for them. Mm, not for them. Not for them. And then, with regards to the guardrail uh, projects, you know, we've uh, been through this, and uh, the reason we uh, we expedited our request, and the county was fantastic coming forward, and uh, and uh, you know, um, um, the, uh, the the funding and getting it done within a short period of time, 
you know, we lost two people out there. And, um, you know, that was the, uh, the impetus and the push behind getting these guardrails out there. That's why we did it. And uh, admittedly, as a part of the process, we told you we made some uh, mistakes, you know. But we also told you that we're going to fix them, you know. Uh, the construction continues to go on out there. It continues to evolve. You know, my suggestion, obviously, is don't ride horses out there because it's not a safe uh, place. And in the next uh, month and a half, they'll complete their project. We'll reassess. The council has already made a commitment with regards to additional uh, openings. But the most important thing is, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the intentions of this uh, council to address some uh, the loss of life out there, that uh, people that, uh, that we knew. And that's why we did it. And again, the county was fantastic. They came forward. They uh, funded it. And in our haste, you know, there's some things that we probably uh, didn't do a very good uh, job of uh, planning, with the exception of that now you have that, uh, we'll have that guardrail in place, and hopefully it'll save uh, some lives. But you've already had a commitment from this uh, council that we're going to address it and do the best we can to fix it. And as the construction continues to evolve out there, it's probably not safe to ride horses Why that's going on. You know, find another uh, route until it's completed, until we have an opportunity to, uh, to address it. So I just uh, wanted to uh, make uh, that known and, uh, for, the, uh, for the record. That concludes uh, my comments. Uh, item number eight, legal comments. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be uh, brief. <clears throat> Apologize for a little laryngitis. It's not really going away as quickly as I would want. <laughs> but if you've never gone to the ENT and had a long hose it's a fun experience. <laughs> um, last week, we had a uh, hearing. One second, Mayor. <clears throat> we had a hearing concerning the gate uh, that is blocking. I think the road is 207. Correct. And at that uh, hearing, the judge um, dismissed and denied Pines's motion to dismissed the case. Pine said that the town didn't have standing to challenge the gate. During that hearing, the judge made several observations, including the fact that if he found in favor of Pines, what would prevent Fort Lauderdale from putting a gate on US-1 and charging Dania residents who wanted to go up US-1? Um, he made a lot of interesting uh, comments, including telling Pines to remove the gate put up a red light, and then each city could ticket anyone who ran it, okay? Based on the judge's initial review on this case, it is pretty obvious which way that case is going. So I, I just want to tell everyone that in a relatively short period of time, <clears throat> I believe that gate is coming out. Um, Aster, I don't know if he's still here left, great job to everyone on the Parks Foundation. I think that you all are close to sixty or seventy thousand uh, dollars in donations to the town. Um, it's a full hundred percent not for profit group. Every dollar given goes right to the town, just like the uh, scholarships and, and others. So uh, truly an amazing organization and great job. That's it, Mayor. Thank you, Keith. Item number nine, administration comments. Andy? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I have a few things. And I, I think Keith's laryngitis would go away if he'd actually stop talking at some point Good and luck. give it some rest, but <laughs> haven't Good been luck. able to do that. So. Did you forget his profession? <laughs> Paid by the word. Jay, uh, just a few things, Mayor. I was going to do a, a more lengthy update on a surtax. Obviously, there's been much discussion during council comments. Mayor, I think you summed it up very, very well. Just a couple of things that, that I would add, if I may, is, is right now they're actually currently dueling penny sales taxes. One is a penny on transportation, which is a county issue. The second is the one penny on infrastructure, which is now being advanced by the MPO. So the, the support is there within enough municipalities who are, who are MPO members now to have the infrastructure tax on the ballot in November. I think, we're, I think that, one's, that one's headed for the ballot. The future of the transportation tax and the county is a little bit more vague at this point. There are some county commissioners who have said that if the MPO, the cities, you know, meaning through the MPO, 
went ahead with the infrastructure tax that they would drop their transportation tax. That hasn't happened yet. So you, potentially you could be looking at two separate penny sales tax items on, on the ballot this November. While that's not likely, and certainly passage of two becomes you know, infinitely more, uh, more difficult, that's, that's where those are right now. Uh, we're watching that. There are enough municipalities within Barrett County representing substantial population that have voted in favor of placing this on the ballot. And that's why I say expect it to go to the ballot without an affirmative vote or, or, a, or a down vote from this council. Uh, I don't think we have the, certainly the population base at this point to stop it from, from going to the ballot. We will, and, and Council Member Fisichelli, Russell's worked very hard on this, monitoring it. We'll keep an eye on it. If, if it gets to the ballot, if it should pass, obviously our residents would be contributing to that sales tax, so we'd want, we would want to make sure the town receives our, our, you know, our uh, proper response back. But at this point, we're certainly we're monitoring it, and uh, you know, we'll see how that continues to play out. That's on the surtax. Uh, Gay Chaples had brought up an issue before, and it, it's one we've discussed you know, previously on some other issues, which is zoning versus use. And within our fire assessment, there are limited categories. There is a commercial category that's not commercial zoning, for example, and that's what she had alluded to. She and I had a brief discussion on it this morning. Marty had furnished her more information. That got to me at 6.30 today. I have not had a chance to really go through that, but I will prepare a little bit more of a summary for all of you so you fully understand the situation here. Uh, but within our fire assessment fee, we're very limited on categories, and there are definitions for those categories. And so from a, a staff standpoint, we try to slot those things in as best we can, given the existing categories. So there may be some discretion, maybe some leeway that, that you may have. I'll go through that with Marty as well, and I will share that information. And if, if there is a solution and some relief, you may be in a position to do that. I, I, I'm not sure we're there yet, but we'll, we'll look at that. And I, I will get that to you certainly as quickly as we can. Uh, just on trash, I just want to let you know the trash contract we have expires in September of next year. Yesterday we actually had a kickoff with a conference call with one of our consultants looking at that and preparing ourselves to, to go out for bid at the appropriate time. You'll be hearing more about that as that gets forward, you know, that, that comes along. But one of the things I spoke to Keith about just yesterday is there are certain things that I want to see in that contract and the next contract. And I know Keith and I are, we've already started those discussions. So we're looking at, uh, you know, the more teeth we can put in there, certainly the better. Sharper. Yes. Uh, I think one last thing I had was uh, Council Member Jablonski had brought up the striping on Sterling Road. It's something we had talked about in the past. We had wanted to wait until the guardrails were completed. We've got, obviously, from last year, we got a lot of work done. We've got some money for the rest of it. We, we are at the point where the bid has been prepared. It is currently advertised. And we have a mandatory pre-bid meeting on that project set for June 2nd. So that will be moving forward. And other than that, Mayor, I do want to take one opportunity just to wish uh, my esteemed colleague at the other end, our counselor, an early happy birthday for tomorrow. Oh. That's all I have, Mayor. Yeah. 21, 22? Well, yeah. you don't look a day over it either. I'll tell you, you look pretty darn good. Happy birth, happy birthday, yeah, happy Keith. Happy birthday. Yeah, I wish I'd have known that. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. All right, that concludes administration comments. <laughs> Item number ten. This is an ordinance on the uh, first reading. Would you read it for the record, please, Russell? And then uh, Keith, I'll uh, give you the opportunity Thank to explain. It's an ordinance of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, creating Chapter 27 of the Town's Code of Ordinances entitled Public Nuisances that Drain Municipal Services, providing for inclusion in the Town's Code, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Mayor and Council, we have numerous properties in the Town that are creating major nuisances with their neighbors and neighborhood um, because of the amount of criminal activity that is going on at those locations. In addition, those locations are creating a serious drain on our limited police resources and fire resources and EMS resources. As a result, um, we met at, at length with, with Robert and uh, police and everyone else to figure out a good solution that could try to um, 
prevent these homes from truly and properties from truly taking advantage of the town and their neighbors and the surrounding community. As such, uh, we have uh, bring before you for your consideration an ordinance that is designed and designated to enable the town to crack down on these properties that are um, having so much criminal activities that they are uh, taking up our, our valuable uh, police, fire, and EMS uh, services. I know there are several residents here who um, are, want to speak a little bit about what they've endured, and um, some have been the impetus for us to bring this forward because of the fact that we did not believe our code had another mechanism to deal with the problem. So it's here for first reading for your consideration. Thank you, Keith. I could ask Keith one quick question. Some of these are state or are they federally regulated, some of these places? These places are everything from a person illegally growing drugs at their home to, um, you know. So we're covered on federal, is, federal, state, and private. Yeah, if you look at even the list um, of public nuisances on page two, it includes everything from houses that have prostitution to drugs to sober homes to you, you name it. Okay. On, on uh, the types of offenses that are being uh, legally committed. Good. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, sir. Council? Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve. Any members of the public wish to comment on this uh, item? You want to read first? Oh, I'm, we did. Oh, we did. We did. We did. Yeah. Okay. Hi, good evening. My name is Alexis Leo. I live out west and I've been living out there for 15 years and this ordinance is extremely in, important. Um, I don't need to get up here and tell you any specific instances, but know this, that in one particular area, the police have been called out over 100 times in less than a seven month period and that is just strictly unacceptable. I can't imagine in our small, sleepy town you know, how we able to effectively use our limited resources in such a way that this doesn't impede us in any other way. God forbid lives that are truly at stake um, are, are impeded by the opportunity that our limited resources can help. And this ordinance will definitely uh, put you, put us in a position to make certain that this can't go on anymore. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you, Lord. I got my cell and my home phone number on there. Any other public comment? This is one of the reasons why you don't want penal added into the uses out there. When you have more of these homes, you're going to have more of these problems. When we ask questions about this in our police report that we get from Davey, we don't get a lot of detail. There's one of these houses behind Mike Canley's house. They had a kid drown there. But you don't hear much about the details. A hundred calls? Is that what I just heard? That's a lot of calls. No wonder nobody has time to write a speeding ticket. You guys, we, we got to get more information when we ask, and we do ask. We don't want to get any more aggressive than we have to be, but somebody that had a hundred calls right close to where his house is, I'm surprised he could keep us cool this long. I think he was in support. So I read this at home the other night, and then I just read it three or four times. And the part that I'm not clear on is, it looks like this will be enforced through the special magistrate that takes care of code enforcement, unless it's an additional special magistrate. I'm not clear on that. But we can fine them up to $5,000 per violation. Is that the way it works? I'm just not clear on the teeth. Okay, thank you. And, and, and Bob, that's the max per law. Okay, but they can be fined over and over again until they get the record together. Thank you. Are you all doing? My name is George Railsback, and I live in the same area out there. And we do have, from the time out there, many, many calls. And a lot of times it's fire truck, rescue truck two or three police. So you have a lot of equipment out there. And all that equipment's out there when somebody's 
really needs it somewhere else when these nuisance calls come in. So I think this is a good ordinance and it'll really help us, you know, plus get our police where they need to be in the fire. Because somebody else is going to get hurt while they're responding to a call. Thank you. Thank you, George. Call me if you can. Any other additional uh, public comment? See no uh, further public comment. Public comment is now uh, closed. Again, we have a motion and a second to approve. Council, any additional questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing uh, none, call the question, please, Russell. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Councilmember Fiskelli? Yes. Councilmember Brykers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Okay, item number uh, item number eleven. For the record, Russell. It's a resolution of the town council of <coughs> Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving an agreement in the amount of one hundred and eighty thousand dollars with A One Property Services Group Inc. to complete the town hall re-roof project, approving a budget amendment to the fiscal year 2015-16 budget, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to enter into an agreement and providing an effective date. Thank you, Russell. Andy. Sorry, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as you all recall, about three years ago, we started putting money aside for this project, and our best guest estimate at that time was about $150,000 to do this project. So we put $50,000 aside over the last three years. This was the last, the third fiscal year, so we have $150,000 <coughs> in reserve for this project. We went out to bid on the project. We had nine vendors who attended our, our mandatory pre-bid meeting. We received only two responses. The low bid was 194,000. The second was over 240,000. So we looked at it from a staff standpoint and said, what can we do? Do we, just, do we throw this out and we go out, do we rebid it? And will we get a lower bid? And part of my concern was based on the two bids that we did receive, which were both in excess of the amount that we had budgeted, I think one of the reasons that we did not get as many responses as we would like is because we are a public entity and when you go out to bid on a job such as this, any, any respondent is going to say, okay, what's, what's the budget for the project? And in those cases, we had to share that information with them and let them know that we had $150,000 budgeted for the project. And, and I think that, in this case, may have worked against us. In the private sector, somebody says, what's your budget for the project? Very easy to say, whatever I need, now give me your best price. In this business, unfortunately, we're not able to do that. So we shared the information, and, and I think that really did impede us. So we looked at the 194,000 and said, what, what can we do? How can we get this a little bit better? And so with, with input and from support from legal, we were able to go back to the low bidder on the project without changing the scope of the project because that would potentially invalidate what we were trying to do, leaving the scope, leaving the terms and conditions exactly the same. We said, okay, we're considering going back out to bid on this. Can you take another look at it? What can you do? And, and the, the respondent at, at that point lowered their price from 194 to 180. Uh, so it was a, you know, certainly a, a reasonable concession on their part in order for us to move this forward. I'll tell you that we have roof leaks now. There's, I just noticed a new stain in the ceiling in my office last week. We do have a leak in the clerk's office, which comes down by our file storage room. We have a roof that's outlived its, its useful expected life. We have a hurricane season around the corner. And while I, I hate to do this, I'm going to ask you all to allocate $30,000 from reserves to get to the 180 so that we can get this project done and get it done in a timely manner. Thank you, Mayor. And if you have any Thank you, Andy. questions, we'll Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second to uh, approve. Any members of the public wish to comment on this item? Newell? Newell Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. Last year, you took $160,000 out of reserves over the budget. Needless, $60,000 was out of the Tisdor reserves, which has to be put back. That's another thing for this budget year to look at. What I'm looking at now is a $30,000 over the estimate, which means that we're not estimating correctly, and therefore, you know, it's not our present engineer's problem. It's our former engineer's problem.
problem that he has inherited. It is a project that needs to be done, but we need to get the estimates correct to put into the budget. Without correct estimates, you're going to be keep doing this and you're going to look like, well, let's just raid the general fund over and over and over and over. Last year's cost overruns that you approved were not necessary. They could have been handled differently. We need to take a look at each one of these projects when they come up before they get to you and cut them back to where the budget is. Whatever the budget is for that year, that's what you've got. If it's an emergency, then come to the council. But if it's regular work, no, live in the budget. We keep, you people just keep approving and approving and approving without a, any thought whatsoever or any asking the questions in a public forum and giving the people the reasons they need to do it. Get with the program, guys. You're looking bad. And you're looking like you're just shoveling money out the door. First, let's get the estimates right. Second, let's get the budget correct. You got a dollar, you spend a dollar. You don't spend a dollar fifty and come to Uncle Uncle Council to get the other fifty cents. Thank you. Andy's uh, completely right uh, about the minute it's a government job, it seems to double in cost because I looked at the square footage on the roof. And I sat down with Andy and the architect and Emily, and uh, we had a nice talk about what should be done and how it should be done. But uh, $194,000 bid, did that include the insulation or not? Yeah, okay. Mayor, Mayor, it does include, it includes the insulation. It includes replacing some of the fascia boards with synthetic wood, which was a suggestion that you had made to us, John, and I thank you for that. Did that include the back area as well? And the back patio. So you're getting everything yes, done. Yes, it does. That, on. Okay. No, my, it is on. Yeah, that the back, the back patio, the the overhang, which is falling down, that's included in this as well. And a metal roof with a forty-year life expectancy. Yeah. He knows. He, the, he helped. Right. The, the metal roof is the way to go. Absolutely. I, but you know, I was just kind of confused about what we were paying for there. Well, we appreciate and your input, John. Absolutely. I think that the, uh, you know, the the price there is it's a high price, and I think that somebody that was not a public entity would probably get a, a much better price than this. But I, the, when, when I looked at the bid and I looked at the specifications, it's really scary. And very few uh, private contractors will bid on a job like this, even though it's cake work. It's easy. These metal roofs are easy to put on. And this guy, just because he's bidding for a government job, is going to really pad his pockets. Because uh, I understand the square footage, what materials go in it, the costs. This guy's going to pocket a lot of money. Uh, this isn't rocket science putting one of these on. And this town, when we put these bids out, the specifications need to be really simplified. And you know, uh, some of the bond requirements rule out a lot of people uh, from bidding on it. We need to knock these barriers down so we can get more competition. Uh, and the roof is just one example of that. But I see it time and time again with a lot of the work we put out there. We're paying too much. So keep the bids simple. And I know there's a lot of state requirements and laws that muck it up. And uh, you know, perhaps we can cut through some of that red tape and, and get a lot more uh, street level vendors in to do some of this work at, at better prices. But I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that, that these high numbers come out. But uh, in the end, I, it, it's really the way to go if we're going to keep this building you know, as our town hall forever, because we will never in our lives have to worry about the roof ever again. And the, the type of roof they're putting on, the building structure will fail before any of the roofing material comes off. And that's what you want ultimately. So uh, we're protecting our building and you know, uh, get it done as soon as possible. Thanks. Thank you, John. Thanks for your help, John. Appreciate it. Any other public comment? See no further public comment. Public comment is uh, now uh, closed. I know we have a motion and a second to approve. A question, you know, because there's some allegations we're not doing a very good job uh, being stewards of uh, how we spend our money. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, Marty, 
what, what did we have in surplus last year that we added to, uh, you know, uh, over and above what, uh, what was uh, budgeted and we put back into uh, surplus? We had, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for the record, my name is Martin Sherwood, the town financial administrator. We had surpluses in all funds across the board. General fund had uh, at least 400 to 500,000. I don't have the uh, exact number uh, for the pickup to reserve. So we had surpluses uh, townwide, as indicated in the audit report uh, that was presented to you. Okay, so, so last year, we spent four to five hundred dollars less, less again than what we had budgeted. Okay, I just wanted to yes, make. Yes, that uh, is correct. So we added uh, another four to five hundred thousand dollars to our surplus as a result of we're doing a pretty darn good job with our budget and keep an eye on uh, on our spending. Yep. Uh, yes, it is, and I just like to mention the estimates that we did receive. Uh, they were. Uh, estimates going back more than three years uh, when we set aside the funds. Plus, the scope was increased uh, with uh, public participation, uh, which uh, increased the cost. So um, I'd like to commend the staff and the vendor for going back to the vendor um, and making this uh, concession and giving us a discount. Another fourteen or $15,000. And I, I'd like to recognize uh, that negotiation as uh, well. Listen, Andy, you know, under that the scenario and that philosophy, I double up what my estimates are. You can never be wrong. You know, you can always be right and be a heck of a lot higher than what, uh, what reality is. But I, I, listen, I take exception that uh, we're not doing a very good uh, job with regards to our, our budget and being pretty darn good stewards. Yep. Uh, four to five hundred thousand dollars in, uh, you know, over and, and above what's left over what we budget, I'd say that that's. Uh, Pretty darn good. So recognize this council for doing a great job in this, uh, and uh, staff, uh, and, and Marty and Andy and everybody else for doing a hell of a job. I don't have any problem with taking $30,000 out to put a roof on uh, our building to ensure. And you're absolutely right. We noticed it on the way out the other day, an, another leak. It has to be done. It has to be taken uh, care of. And I don't have any issues or problems at all with this. Gary? Yeah, Mayor, thanks. Uh, I just want to mention that in a, with the budget surplus, this is the fifth year in a row that we've enjoyed those surpluses. And they've all been in excess of six figures. So uh, I just thought we should mention that for the record. So fifth year, five years in a row. Kudos to you guys. Kudos. And I, I just thought that that was important, you know, because the, the, that insinuation obviously is uh, something that uh, I find uh, uh, offensive. And uh, that bothered me uh, tremendously, and that's not uh, true. And I didn't realize that. I knew that there were surpluses, but for five years in a row now. So yeah, it should be recognized. We're doing a hell of a job with regards to our budget. Okay. Is there any? Steve. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a couple of comments as well. Um, the thought that came through my mind when I heard that was uh, I would challenge anybody to come up with an exact estimate on what it would take to uh, put a roof on this building in, what are we talking about, the year? 1920 go ahead give me an estimate you know it's it's a challenge to do it's a challenge to do that far in advance when you're going to save up money for three three plus years to do the project so I think I think that actually the estimate was pretty good um, the economy was significantly different uh, four years ago when that was done so um, I actually think it was a, a very well job a, a very well done job to get the estimate there I do I do I would make the recommendation and I would look uh, see if there's support for it on the council um, I would like to see um, an allocation made in next year's budget to refund this $30,000 because this is not the kind of thing that I would really want to go into reserves for. Um, so I would like to, basically borrowing from ourselves for a year. Well, let's see where we are. We may have savings again this year that well, makes up And for that's it. exactly what I'm saying. Is I, I hope it would, we'd be able to just pay it back at that point. But rather than, uh, you know, just taking without a plan to pay back, I think it would be better to to uh, you know, basically loaning ourselves the money for a year and then and then paying it back. That's that's what I prefer. I don't know how it, if you all would. Uh, I, I, listen, I'm a pro listen. It's important. We save uh, my, no question yeah. about that. You've done a hell of a job the last uh, five years, yeah. and I don't disagree with you, uh, Steve. Yeah. It needs to be healthy, and that's not uh, 
you know, um, something that we want to do uh, consistently. Right. It's only an emergency, and I suspect that this certainly could be classified as, uh, an, as an emergency. Building, certainly very important. We get, yeah, yeah, very important to us. Without a roof and hurricane season approaching and new leaks developing uh, frequently, it's something that needs to be addressed uh, right away. So, okay, any additional questions? Uh, Freddie. I just want to briefly say I'm glad that we finally, we're going to put a metal roof on this yep. building. Yep. You know, once we do that, it's there for life. For okay. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, any additional questions, comments, or concerns, Council? Seeing none, we have a motion to second to approve. Russell, call the question, please. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Brackers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes, item number 12 for the record, uh, please, Russell. A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, requesting the South Florida Water Management District incorporate into the design plans for an impoundment area two bridge crossings over the C-11 Canal, urging the South Florida Water Management District to advocate for and defend this design feature to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers so it may be included in the final design plan, expressing support for this project and providing an effective date. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Russell. Motion to second approve. Any members of the public wish to comment on this item? Neil Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. This is one of the orphan projects that I have been working on for the last 12 years, trying to get bridges across the C-11. I believe this is the greatest and best opportunity that the town has to put those bridges across right now and at a very low cost of where the federal government pays the freight. Uh, I'd like to thank Keith and his staff for working on this in an expeditious manner to where it comes before the council at this time because time was of the essence. And that I hope that this council will approve it and that South Florida Water Management will lead the, the charge that it's supposed to and the federal government will pick up the tab. And I think that's a very, very equitable situation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Noel. I plan to carry it to our adjoining uh, communities also to get them to support something. I was like not paying attention, so it's, I can speak. I, I'm, I'm apologizing in advance. I was back there talking with Eastman. But uh, if you're talking about the bridges going across the thing, this is one of the biggest things okay f for a federal grant that i can think of if you look at the potential recreation you have by flooding that area with four feet of water with all the lakes in the middle do you realize what kind of bass fishing you can have the more phosphorus you dump into that area the little shad the bass feed on are going to be feeding in the in this shallow water and they're going to the bass that live in the deep water are going to come up there when it's cool and start hitting on them you're going to breed a hell of a lot of nice fish in there. That's a recreational value. There's no more places to fish. You ever go out here off the weekend and see how many boats are fly over that area? There's a hook every 100 yards all the way around from the Keys all the way down. And it's too rough to fish probably half the year. All the fishing guides, all the potential economic benefits, those people spend an extra day or two in this town, and they have to stay over there where all those condos and high-rises are. There isn't a lot of hotels out here, if you noticed. We're going to be making them money. they got to improve Griffin Road. they got to fix that canal bank over there and run them sheep pilings around, build these bridges to get over there, and then figure about adding some uh, other areas where they can have kayaks go back in there. You don't have to have a, a motorboat to fish in four feet of water in a place like that. It's so protected. You could go back in there in one of these kayaks. You buy at Bass Pro Shops. You could, you could probably support another Bass Pro Shop somewhere in this area by all the fishing tackle and other things that would be bought there. That's what this economy needs. They need to stimulate spending. People are holding on to money because they got the hell scared out of them a couple of years ago. I would really be turning this into a giant federal project to get a whole load of money in that area so i would also when you do this resolution try to get some of the other interest groups in the area like the airboat club because we dig this kind of stuff we're already putting on you funds and fishing trips and everything else and all the other water management properties in the state of florida we got pretty much carte blanche to go to any one of those stas okay and hunt and fish 
I don't know why we're building it right here on top and you take the, the zip codes and you start adding them up, the, the economics, the, the, the wealth that's in this area, it's got to be big. Look how many people are going to see an alligator out there at Everglades Holiday Park. I mean, you, they're making so damn much money off an alligator, we ought to be breeding them and dumping them in here. So, just a thought. Any other speakers about the equestrian bridges? I got that was funny. Okay. <laughs> Dumping alligators in there. Listen, this is going to have a trail, a six-mile trail around it. And um, if you go up to Gainesville, um, or actually, yeah, Gainesville, uh, and there's a big um, preserve up there, uh, you walk out, you can walk, uh, except you have to watch the 5,000 alligators that are sunning themselves on the so, yeah, I, I really wouldn't encourage this because I think the fishing and trail riding is and walking is going to be jeopardized by, you know, somebody dumping a lot of alligators out there. Um, but it is a great idea, and I hope you support it. Um, as Noel said, he worked on this for 12 years trying to get even a, a little bit of a pass across Bonaventure, and we were told that Weston had the stripe rights, so therefore we, we couldn't make a trail across that bridge. And then we tried the Bladder Bridge, but uh, Homeland Security thought maybe we were in danger on that end, so we'll have our own two bridges that we can come and go on, and I think it'll be awesome. So thank you. Thank you, Gay. Any additional uh, public comments? See no public, any more public comment? Public comment is now closed. Council, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, Russell, call the question, please. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fisichelli? Yes. Council Member Breikers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number 13. The resolution for the record, please, Russell. A resolution of the Town, of, town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, amending resolution number 2012-31 by eliminating the master plan permit fee and plan processing fee for residential building permits, clarifying that the minimum base permit fee for residential construction is the greater of $90 per discipline or 1.75% or of the job value and providing an effective date. Thank you, Russell. Andy? Motion to approve. Second. We got a motion and a second uh, to approve. Any uh, members of the public wish to comment on this item? Seeing no public comment, public comment is now uh, closed. Again, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns? Andy. Okay. They're satisfied, uh, okay. Andy. Okay. You did a hell of a job, you know, well, in you your meetings. You did a great job. We should get the Russell, call the question, please. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Councilmember Fiskelli? Yes. Council Member Breikers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number 14, the approval of the minutes for the March 24, 2016 regular meeting and the April 14, 2016 regular meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Motion is second to approve. Always throw it out to the public because we've been corrected before and found mistakes. Seeing none, uh, public comment is closed. Again, a motion is second to approve. Russell, call the question, please. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Fiskelli? Yes. Council Member Breikers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number uh, 15, and uh, Steve, no pressure. You might not have uh, have selected anybody yet. We understand that. And uh, this is just for advertising purposes to let uh, people know that that position is open. Yeah, I, uh, I, I've been sorely disappointed. I haven't, uh, have not heard uh, nominations from the public for this position. I important position um, really looking forward to getting the right person on the uh, drainage and infrastructure board so it's still open I don't want to just throw somebody on there I want to find the right person so thank you thank you Steve okay that concludes uh, our agenda items I'll take a motion to adjourn motion to adjourn I'm sure it is unanimous this meeting is here die adjourn thank you 